Welcome to In His Presence. Where all things are possible. It's going to be an That's exciting, right. exciting program. How God rewrites your history. We're going to share today about how God rewrote my history. And it's kind of a crazy story. I was a cocaine dealer. I was a jet thief for the Colombian cartel. And God arrested not just me through the feds, but in a cell in Leavenworth Penitentiary in 1990. He visited me. And like Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus, I was knocked off my high horse of pride. I was blinded by the light. And I looked up, and the Lord restored my sight. Once was blind, but now I see is the old saying. I was blinded by a wrongful lifestyle. And God radically changed me by His goodness, His grace, the fiery finger of the Holy Spirit. And what he did for me, and I'll share more as we get into the program, but he wants to do it for you. Though That's your right. sins are as scarlet, they will become white as snow. He'll rewrite your history. Last week, we shared the scriptural basis of how God rewrote history for several people through scripture. And how he wants to do it for you. Joanna? That's right. So make sure you check out, if you didn't catch the last show... You definitely want to go online to virtualchurchmedia.com and uh, download that show and watch it because the scriptures that David shares are really powerful. But today, I want to start out with some prayer for you, and I want to start out with a little bit of worship before we go into our free flow and help you write history today. Are you ready? So, I want you to relax now and allow the presence of the Lord to come in. There it goes. And release the stress of the day, of the week, of the month. And let it just fall off you right now. So close your eyes and just let it go. Release it unto the Lord right now. Father God, I just lift up my brothers and sisters to you right now. I release your anointing to break every chain and break every negative thing that has happened lord in this in the name of jesus i command the angel of the lord to go before them now in jesus name to their house to the highways and byways to help unfold their destinies in jesus name holy spirit i ask that you touch their hearts right now and mold their hearts to be softened and made pliable in jesus name Holy, you are holy, mighty is your name, O oh Lord. Change our hearts, make it fresh, O oh God, and heal us. And touch us now, oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for releasing your fire right now. In Jesus' name, your glory can touch them. the presence of God is here and in his presence all things are possible uh, before we get further in I see the Lord is wanting to do some dental miracles right now mm -hmm. and uh, he wants to heal your teeth um, there's somebody with uh, a problem in the jaw on this side and if you just receive, just say, I receive right now. There's the fires going right through your jaw. You're feeling it heat up. And God is moving in that area. Others have, just, just let him, let him do it. If you can perceive Jesus as your Savior, you can receive him as your Savior. 
If you can perceive him as your heal her, healer, you can receive him as your healer. If you can perceive him as your dentist, you can receive him as your dentist. We've seen many, many dental miracles mm -hmm. of all kinds. I have dental miracle in my mouth that occurred on a Easter weekend several years ago. I was headed to the dentist on a Tuesday, but on an Easter Sunday, the Lord had directed me, interestingly enough, um, to write a, 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 a ministry check as a guest minister was in town. It was sacrificial at the time. And I'm thinking, how am I going to pay for my dental work if it's going to be really, you know, big and bad? And I walked into the service, and all of a sudden, the minister stopped. He said, God wants to do dental miracles. He said, just open your mouth and he will fill it. And so I just went like that and I opened my mouth. And I didn't feel anything. And I didn't feel a numbness. I didn't feel anything. All of a sudden I began to taste something. And it tasted like metal in my mouth. And I, you know, what is this, you know? And I thought maybe I had eaten or drank something and, you know, I was starting to, you know, come back into my mind. I didn't know. And all of a sudden the minister said, some of you are tasting what may be like a copper or a metal taste in your mouth. He said, it's not copper. He said, it's either gold or silver. And he asked women to take out compacts and for people to begin to look in their mouth. I know this may sound crazy. But I looked in my mouth and I had what was a bright, shiny, like a white, silverish look. And uh, it blinked. And wherever I had had amalgam fillings, all the pain went away. And it actually became, I know this may sound crazy, but it became white gold. I actually have video footage of that service where I was at. And uh, long story short, other people got dental miracles that day, and we've seen dental miracles in our ministry. But I went to my dentist, and he looked, and he actually took a sample of one. He sent it in. It was a mixture of uh, silver and other metals, and it was coated in uh, actually platinum is what it was. And my dentist is in Kansas City, and he'll, he'll attest to this crazy story. We've seen God give dental miracles to people as he rewrites their history. And when God forgives you, he also wants to heal you. And so we have faith for dental miracles because he did it to us, and now he does it through us, and he's the one that heals. Will you receive him as your dentist today? Somebody asked me one day, he said, David, why would God put gold or silver in your mouth? And I said, I... I don't know. I said, why would you, who loves your children, take them to the dentist and pay for gold or silver? And he thought about it, and he said, you have a point. He went from a questioner of God being a possible dentist. Now he's a full believer, and he's also received dental miracles. God wants to rewrite your history, so let's just allow him right now. Yes. We just speak for the miraculous power of God to begin to heal you gingivitis That's right. also tinnitus is being healed in the ears right now I'm seeing a number of healing there's a tumor up in this area of the head God's doing miracles some of you have been uh, plagued with headaches uh, you've had uh, like an EMF electromagnetic frequency overload from cell phones and computers and Wi-Fi and smart meters and you don't know what's wrong with your body. Some of you even have numbness. God's supernaturally resetting your system right now. He's resetting it by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the blood of the Lamb. He's also setting you free from anger and bitterness at the same time that opened the door for that thing to have dominion in your life. Ecclesiastes 10.8 says, if a man kicks a hole, if he kicks a hole in a hedge, 
a serpent will come through and bite him. Ecclesiastes 10, a King James Version, we've been given a hedge of protection. Job had a hedge of protection, and Satan couldn't touch him until God lifted the hedge. Sometimes the hedge is lifted for a test. Other times we kick a hole mm -hmm. in the hedge. And now God's restoring the hedge, your spiritual force field that God puts about you. But it also emanates out of you when right, right relationship occurs. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you, the hope That's of glory. Right. Peter's shadow that releases the glory of God, that heals the sick and casts out devils, can emanate through you, through a yielded life. I command every cavity to be filled That's supernaturally. Right. I command amalgams to either be removed, the mercury that causes problems down the road. I command it to come out or to change supernaturally. I also see people with metal plates in their back and pins in their wrists. They're metal. Doctors put them in for you, and now Dr. Jesus is literally moving them around and supernaturally removing some of them. We've seen a number of these miracles happen in the services where people that had titanium uh, and the surgeons did the best they could and uh, people were on pain medications and uh, they were titanium and metal bent into place as we prayed. We've also seen people that had fillings. The, the fillings would disappear and enamel would appear We've also seen people that had metal and the metal disappeared because yeah. God can take a four-day body that's dead like Lazarus and raise him from the dead. You know, skin worms come in and begin to eat away. God can put... Let's not limit God today. I know this may stretch your faith. It would stretch mine if I was sitting on that side and some guy who was talking about rewriting our history was talking about this to me that if you can perceive him as your savior you can receive him as your savior if you can perceive him as your healer you can receive him as your healer if you can perceive him as your surgeon you can receive him as your surgeon how about painless dentistry how about painless surgery how about a visitation where God takes our history rewrites it and makes all things new and he literally uncreates the problem. Joanna? Mm -hmm. um, there's also someone that's been in an accident, well maybe many of you have been in an accident and specifically your shoulder and your neck and your back was been injured. Chronic. Yeah. So I just break the trauma off of you right now in the name of Jesus. And I speak healing, I command that shoulder to heal. Right now, all the ligaments, tissues, tendons, and muscles, I command it to go back into place now in Jesus' name and loose the trauma out of the cells in the name of Jesus. I command that spine to shift. I command those bulging discs to go back into proper position right now in Jesus' name as the angel of the Lord lay hands on you in the name of Jesus. And I command that neck, the chronic neck pain, to be healed. I break it off you. I break that trauma off your neck right now in Jesus' name. And I just release a healing fire, God, over you. Somebody's being healed of uh, sinusitis right now. And God's just, you're feeling a heat in that area and it's starting to open up. For those of you who have been believing God for a dental miracle, I want you to, you know, go, you know, look, if you've got a, a cell phone, just turn on the, you know, the, the camera and just put it on selfie photo and look in your mouth or take a picture of it. And sometimes these things begin to fill in uh, even after we pray. And sometimes they, they show up overnight as people are asleep. They wake up with those things. So I don't want you to, 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 to limit God. The scripture says the Israelites, they, they, they tempted God in the wilderness and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Please don't limit God. If you can perceive him as your dentist, you can receive him as your dentist the same way. If you don't know Jesus, but you're perceiving him as the God who can save you, just receive him in now. Jesus loves you just the way you are. He loved me just the way I was. But he loved me and he loves you way too much to leave you in your current condition. He took a harlot a prostitute and in an instant he was able to cleanse her and she walked out of prostitution Rahab the harlot 
is in the bloodline of the Messiah Jesus. He took her sins, which were red as scarlet, and he made them white as snow. He'll do it for you. He took David, a murderer. He took David, who shed innocent blood. David, who was an adulterer and killed Uriah the Hittite, the husband of Bathsheba, who he'd slept with and had a child out of wedlock. He took a census and he wasn't supposed to. It cost the lives of 70,000 Israelites. And when he repented, the Bible says in Acts 13, 22, God rewrote his history. That's right. He rewrote his history and he says, David is a man after my own heart. That's what scripture says in Acts 13, 22. He did it for Rahab. He did it for Sarah who laughed at God. Didn't believe the promise. And then she lied about it. And scripture says in Hebrews 11 that she conceived because she counted God who was faithful. That he was able to keep his promise. Because she repented. She turned. It's not what you do. It's what you do today that makes the difference. Right. And God rewrites your history. God's rewriting history, and he's undoing the sin death that caused the physical ailments and problems. Some of you have been traumatized. Some I've seen people with uh, men and even a couple of women with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder from really being in the war. And you've seen some things that no human should have to see. Mm -hmm. And God is reinterpreting. And this is what I'm hearing from the Lord. It's not your fault what happened. There's other forces at work. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Some of you are even having survivor's guilt. I've seen gang members right now that their friends got shot and killed, and you're still alive. One of you, you even ran in the midst of the firestorm, and they got killed, and you should have been, quote unquote, you know, standing firm and holding down the fort. You know what? God had a plan, and you're, you're, you're alive for a reason. You had a praying grandmother. A praying grandmother touched the heart of God. You may have fled in fear. Gideon was hiding in a wine press threshing wheat, and God said, Oh, Gideon, mighty man of valor, through an angel. And God then used him to deliver an entire nation. Mm -hmm. He rewrote his history, Joanna. Yeah, I'm also seeing um, someone who... Um, You've had an abortion or you've taken a life of someone else it's been secret it's been hidden in the dark and the Lord wants you to be healed he wants you to be set free he wants you to lay that at the cross today at his feet that act and the guilt that has plagued you I, I break that right now so if you haven't asked Jesus to forgive you I invite you to repeat this prayer Jesus, forgive me of committing blank, and you fill in the blank. I repent. Change my heart, Lord God. I invite you into my heart afresh today and ask you to forgive me and help me to let go of everything that's been in there and to this day and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Put a love in my heart that I've never had before and fill me with your presence. In Jesus' name. And I break that darkness off mm -hmm. of you in Jesus' name. I break shame, guilt, and condemnation in the name of Jesus. And I release the forgiveness and the glory and the love, the love of God. He loves you. Oh, he loves you, he loves you, will you receive it today, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence over them right now. There's a, a word of knowledge I'm getting and in, in the knee. It's like my, my knee is like on fire right now. And God is healing knees now. I believe he's healing a variety of conditions in the knee. But this is almost like 
a knee replacement that wasn't done correctly. And God is going in there right now and he's literally fixing everything in your knee right now. And if you begin to move the knee around, you're gonna find that the clicking's gone, the stiffness is gone, and if you get up and begin to, you know, do squat down on it, do whatever you couldn't do before. And I, I just wanna say this, if there's anything after we prayed for healing, and God's released that or called out a word of knowledge. If you'll begin to go do something that you weren't able to do before, you'll find out that you're healed as you're going to do it. And it becomes, and some of you just got complete miracles. I just saw that as you began to start to do that. And there's some people weeping right now. Please, please, you know, email us at info at virtualchurchmedia.com. We love to hear God's testimonies of how he rewrote history with people and he gave people new futures and so I believe a variety of knee conditions and and I also heard that God is cleansing kidneys right now and he's just turning things back on and you're gonna find that everything begins to start to function as it was designed in Adam before the fall in Christ after the resurrection That's Joanna I think you're getting something as well yeah, he's rewriting your history right now. He's rewriting the history of your heart. He's rewriting the history of your DNA and your body. He's rewriting the history of your emotions. Mm. And so I'm giving a specific word for the skeptic. Mm. You've been a skeptic. You actually maybe don't really believe God is real. And you know what? So I challenge you today. And I challenge you, if you're really seeking, if you really want an answer, I challenge you. God. Double dog dare you. Double dog dare you, Jesus, to show yourself to me. Not only ask that if you really want to know, but I also want to, those for, of you who are also skeptical in healing, I want to share my personal quick story. I was pretty skeptical about healings. I thought, you know, what I saw on TV was, was fake until God touched me at a meeting in Europe, in Finland, actually. And it was this amazing pastor who travels to Russia and uh, phenomenal evangelist, right? All kinds of crazy things happen to this guy. So he prayed for me because uh, I had back pain. And uh, he asked me to um, stand in front of him. You know, this was a group of, front of a group of 30 people. And so I stood, he said, well, you know, you have one leg shorter than the other. I said, yeah, I know. I've had that for a long time. He said, well, no wonder you got back pain. And uh, he says, go ahead and sit down and put your legs out in front of you on the stool. So I did, and uh, all he did was he put his hand on my knee, and he said, Lord, touch her. And all of a sudden, my skeptical little self got corrected with my leg growing out, and I literally felt my hips shift. It was crazy. It was like I was a, this, you know, this science spy movie, and I was the one that was, you know, the science spy uh, character. But God grew out my leg. So I'm going to pray for you right now, Lord. And all the pain left. And all the pain left, yeah. And, and you never had to, no, no more chiropractor, you no. know. I didn't have any more back pain. I had a lot of back pain at that time. And so God healed me of that. He also healed me of migraines. So I pray for you. If you're that skeptic today and you've got one leg short of the other or you've got migraines, I pray for you. Or sleepless nights. Sleepless I nights. Really we rebuke up. that off of you now in Jesus' name. We release healing. Touch them, Lord. Touch them right now with your love. God is so good. He's also healing people of uh, insomnia right now. I, I, we didn't plan on a healing program, did we? No. We were going to talk about how God rewrote history and, you know, uh, he's so gracious. But he loves you so much. So insomnia, we command that to go. We declare... I rebuke that spirit. Yeah, it's a spirit of torment. Yeah. In the middle of the night that comes on you, I break the power of that thing in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. We release the angel of the Lord to rest upon you and to bring you by the Prince of Peace, the peace of God that bypasses all understanding. You know, the world, uh, they determine peace as a lack of war, uh, peace as a lack of noise, peace as this and that. But you can be completely tormented without any of those things. In, in the kingdom of God, as a son or a daughter of God, it's not the absence of those things that brings peace. It's the presence of God that brings peace in the midst of the storm. I release the presence of God yes. by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that would bring the Prince of Peace into your situation. Lest the Lord watch the city, the watchman watch it in vain. Psalms 127, 2. The Lord giveth his beloved sleep. I release the rest and the sleep of God. I don't want to name certain pharmaceuticals, you know, over a TV broadcast. But there's some sleep medications, and I'm actually seeing the names. The Lord's breaking the power of them right now. Right now. Right now. He's also cleansing your liver supernaturally of the damage that's been done through pharmaceuticals that, that God really wanted to touch and heal you. That season is now past. You, you know, consult a physician. I'm not telling you what to do with your medications. I'm just sharing with you what the Lord's showing me he wants to do. If you'll step into the river, God will heal you mm -hmm. supernaturally in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And you know, I, go ahead, Joanna. And we just released the angel of peace. The angel of the Lord and let's lay hands on you. I declare Psalm 91 that you will rest in the shadow of the Almighty, in the shadow of his wings. You will find rest and peace. Shalom. The shalom is falling over you right now as we go to close this program. We release the shalom of God in Jesus' name. I also declare and I decree every spirit that would try to stir up controversy over what's been shared today every spirit that would be dissenting against the will and purpose of God in scripture of the God who changes not a thing would be broken over your life and that you would then go to Jesus seek the, the Lord on your face and to seek the word to see if these things are so we break that spirit of controversy and we establish the word of the living God in your household. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. We bless you today. I'm David. I'm Joanna. We are the Herobedians, and this is Virtual Church Media. Download our mobile app. Watch us on the fly and encounter Jesus in his presence. That's right, where all things are possible. For those who believe. God bless you. God bless we'll you. see you next week.